So here's an egg, and if you drop an egg, it might break. But there are ways to stop it breaking, including the way that we catch it. What this does is it increases the collision time and therefore reduces the force that the egg experiences. Now, this same principle is used when it comes to car design, and there are certain features of a car that uh, mean that uh, the occupants inside, if the car has an accident and it slows down really quickly, what we do, we want to increase the collision time for certain parts to minimise the force on the driver. But there's no point in me just using a toy car. Let's go outside and look at a real car and some of these features. So this is my car and I just thought I'd talk through some of the main kind of ways that this is designed to help protect the occupants in the event of a collision. Now if you have an egg and you throw it up in the air and then catch it again, what you tend to find is that you move your arm down as you're catching the egg. Now the egg's momentum is going to change by the same amount because it has the same initial velocity but what we're doing is we're increasing that collision time and if you have a greater time for that change of momentum you have a smaller force and that's what a lot of the features are designed to do in a car. So first of all, at the front, you have a crumple zone. Uh, so, you know, starting with things like the bumpers down here, but this whole part of the engine is designed to basically kind of fold up and crumple in. And what that means is if there is an accident, the, the people inside are there, they're changing their momentum by the same amount. It takes a longer amount of time. And yes, that's going to do some damage to the car. It might write it off, but if you have a big uh, accident, it's better for the car to be destroyed and the people inside to be safe rather than having a rigid car that then transfers all that force to the occupants. The other thing that you might have on a car is um, a good kind of uh, tread depth. So if you look at the tyres here, what you have is a deep tread and that needs to go all the way across. And again, if you look at modern cars, they've got bigger tyres, bigger, deeper wheels. And that means there's going to be more, um, con uh, you know, more surface in contact with the ground. And that means you're going to have a, a greater amount of friction that can be provided by the tyres, which will help you come to a break in a shorter area. Looking inside the car, we've got a few other features. So one of the first features that you have is you have an airbag and this is designed to inflate really rapidly in the event of a collision and again what this is doing this is cushioning you as you come to a halt and again rather than coming to a you know a smack on the steering wheel which would have um, you know a really kind of big force your, your whole face is brought to a gradual kind of uh, stop I say gradual you still might break your nose you might chip a few teeth but compared to the, the effect of just hitting something really hard solid like this um, having an airbag come out is going to really protect uh, yourself and the other passengers in the car a seat belt is another thing which is designed to hold the occupants inside the vehicle so that people in the back don't come flying forwards and people in the front don't go through the windscreen. And again, this has got some elasticity in the belt. So rather than coming to a complete stop, what it's designed to do is there's a small amount of give, which again is going to increase that collision time in the event of a crash. Something else that you might notice about modern cars is that you have quite a big pillar here. And actually what we have inside this car is a kind of roll cage. It may be, like, you know, if you look at sort of really vintage or retro cars, they had very thin columns here. And that means if the car went upside down, often the roof would collapse. So these things here are super strong and that forms part of the whole kind of structure of the car. And again, if we have things like the door shutting, you know, you've got big wide doors and all of this kind of forms a protective cage around the inhabitants. So that's very much the outside kind of physical structure of the car, but there are also all sorts of electronics and sensors inside. This includes things like ABS, which is um, a braking system that basically, rather than kind of locking up uh, the caliper on the disc, it kind of lets it on and off, on and off, on and off. And this means that the tyres don't end up skidding, which means that you've got a shorter braking distance, and it also allows you to steer while braking really heavily, so you can maybe get yourself out of trouble. So ABS is fairly standard, but especially on lots of new cars, and this car's a few years old now, so it doesn't actually have any kind of buttons that do this, but you have things which are like things like automatic braking. So it puts the brakes on uh, before you do as a human, which means that even if you have a slow reaction time, your total uh, sort of thinking distance and therefore your total stopping distance is going to decrease. And you've got things like line assist and collision warning systems. And all of these sorts of new technology, as we kind of move towards sort of more automated and driverless cars in the future, are going to really stop a lot of accidents. And that's because most of the time, the reason that people have accidents is because of human error and people driving too fast. Anyway, back to the studio now just for the final part of this video. So I hope that all makes sense. Remember, these features are really important, and that's what stops things like eggs or indeed people breaking when there are collisions.